This is the Google Pixel 10 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. This model does not have a SIM or micro SD tray, so we won't need to start off by removing it. So heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Once the back plate is pried from the frame, it can be carefully lifted over from the right to the left, but we need to be careful since the flex cable for the sensors on the back is still attached to the main board. There are two T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed that are holding on the metal plate or cover or the flex cable connector. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't need to pry off the backplate to replace that. However, if you are planning on replacing the camera bezel, there are four T4 or Torx 4 screws which do need to be removed on the other side. The wireless charging coil is located here in the center, including the magnets. This flex cable connects the wireless charging coil, and FC antenna, the rear microphone, the flash, as well as the laser autofocus sensor on the back to the main board. At this point, there are nine more T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. There's a layer of graphite film between the battery and the wireless charging coil to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. This is the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the speaker opening. So when it comes to removing the battery, it looks like Google is using a new pull pouch. So let's see how easy or difficult it is to pry the battery off. This is the 4970 milliamp hour battery. Even with the new pull pouch Google is using, I still managed to tear or rip the pull tab even after applying some heat to try to loosen up the adhesive underneath. So this pull pouch isn't the greatest design, but it's definitely better than the previous pull tab they were using.
Once the battery has been removed, including the pull pouch, we can also see that this flex cable connects the subboard to the main board. Here we have a look at the 48 megapixel main, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and 10.8 megapixel telephoto lens. The main and telephoto lens have OIS or optical image stabilization. Here's a look at the 10.5 megapixel front facing camera. Five additional T4 or Torx 4 screws need to be removed. This is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. Once that's removed, there are two more T4 or Torx 4 screws which are revealed. So looking at the main board, we can see graphite film and a thermal pad on the shield top transfer heat. Taking a look at the other side, we can see the proximity and ambient light sensor, as well as thermal paste on the back shield top transfer heat. Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we can see the RAM which is seated over the processor. Taking a look at the subboard, we see the charger port located here with a rubber gasket around it, and the microphone located next to that. Here's a look at the other side. The linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. The same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top, and the secondary microphone located next to that. To replace the flex cable for the power button or volume keys, there are three T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed, followed by the metal plate and gently peeling off the flex cable. There is thermal paste on top of a 3D layer of graphite which is underneath the motherboard to help transfer heat. So no vapor chamber on this model. As for replacing the screen, for that, you don't have to disassemble the phone from the back, but instead heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the screen off, which will have a connector on the bottom corner of the screen where the flex cable is attached, giving you access to disconnecting the flex cable and removing the screen. Now I'm not going to pry this working screen off since there is a high chance of damaging a working screen in the process of prying it off. If you were to accidentally insert a semi ejector tool in the microphone hole, you don't need to worry since both the microphone and filter are seated above the hole, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.